Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to all Araneta citizens watching us right now. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Before anything else, let me introduce myself. My name is John Santos, and I will be your host for this meaningful afternoon. Araneta City is one with the world as we campaign for the mental health awareness, especially in the pandemic, because hashtag you matter. Today, we are joined by Bini Bini Filipinas 2020 candidate representing Manila, Patricia Garcia. Hello, Patricia. Kamusta? Hi. Hi, Sir John. Thank you for that introduction. And first of all, thank you so much, Araneta City, for inviting me in this Mental Health Awareness Forum. So just a quick introduction also. My name is Patricia. I'm your Bini Bini number four, representing the city of Manila. Um, I graduated in De La Salle University with a bachelor's degree in education psychology. Kaya nga, I'm also really thankful na na-invite ako sa event na to. And yes, Araneta is one with the world in celebrating uh, mental health awareness, which is will, will happen tomorrow, October 10. And the Philippines also is celebrating the mental uh, National Mental Health Week during the second week of October. Ayan. All right. So, Patricia, you mentioned something about, you know, the, the you know, pageant and uh, uh, introducing yourself as Bini Bini number four. Um, let's talk about your pageant very quick. Mabilisan lang na question, Anna. Uh, what's keeping you busy this pandemic? Aside from that preparation for the pageant, Actually, um, John, I'm very lucky talaga that since the start of pandemic, I've been busy with work. Ang naging siguro pinaka-change ko lang is the transition from working in a corporate to uh, going into public service. So currently, I work now at the House of Representatives of the Philippines and I'm very thankful for that opportunity. So that's what keeping me busy and um, I just you know, uh, follow yung ating government protocols that we stay at home. I spend more time with my family, at least even if I am in the um, government, hindi naman kami every day pumupunta sa work. That's why it, it's also the time that I saw that's very significant that uh, I spend the time with my mom, with my dad, and also with my, with, with my niece, helping her in her online classes. So, ayun. Okay, now before we proceed with our forum, I let me just say that you look really fit. So I think this is in preparation Thank for the you so <laughs> You're in your tip-top shape, can I just say? Uh, uh, <laughs> question at in relation to that. Do you believe that by taking care of yourself, let's say by exercising, getting enough sleep, and eating well, of course, is one way to protect one's mental health? Well, of course. Actually, since the start of lockdown, that's what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to um, eat healthy, keep myself healthy, drink vitamins every day, and of, and, and of course, uh, include yung ating, um, aking workout routine at least four times a week. Because that's how also I could strengthen my immune system. And it's also um, a way of uh, for me to, to release my stress kapag working out. That's why siguro medyo naging ano na rin ako to be, to be fit. And thank you for that, ano. Thank you for that compliment. Okay, now, uh, last question before I introduce our uh, sure. guest speaker for today, ano. Uh, the new normal isn't the new normal or the normal that we all know. Uh, the, no, the, new, the new normal now is all about distancing ourselves from one another to ensure, of course, everyone's safety. Uh, do you think that social distancing or distancing has an effect in one's mental health? Well, personally, I think yung social distancing, I think we changed it na yung term to physical distancing. So it's only about being physically apart from um, some people. So it doesn't mean that you cut off your communications. Kaya yung nakita natin yung importance ng social media ngayon, that it allowed us to, to, to reach people that we haven't talked to for a while, yung mga friends natin and um, other loved ones that we thought na hindi natin nakakausap because, because we, are, we were busy with work eh, before all this um, pandemic happened. We're preoccupied. Everything's fast-paced. So I don't think, for me, ha, I don't think that, that um, physical distancing really affected my mental stability naman. Thank you so much, Patricia, for sharing your inputs in today's topic. I guess all of our viewers are eager to know more about our topic for today. So, so to talk about more on mental health awareness, we have invited the co-chairperson of the Psychological Association of the Philippines LGBT Psychology Special Interest Group, the millennial psychologist, Rian Portuguese. 
Hi. Hi. Thank you so yeah. much for that ano, um, introduction, no, John. Hi. Hello. How are you? How are you? Hello. Hi, Rian. Hi, Patricia. I'm good. I'm good. And I'm quite excited since this is about mental health. And I know a lot of you, a lot of people no, are waiting no, to, to learn more about mental health. Ayan. Yeah. So, okay. So, I, I know you're all set for today's forum. So, allow me to start off by asking, what is mental health? Well, that's actually part of my discussion. But basically, when we say mental health, um, it's it affects how we think, how we feel, and um, how we behave. And when we say mental health, it's the huge portion yeah, is about self-care, resiliency. It's about um, having that growth mindset, keeping yourself um, um, productive, and uh, managing your... Uh, your stress. So more of um, positive din siya. Hindi lang siya more on psychological disorders and interventions, diagnosis. They usually pinaportay sa social media or sa media. No? So malaking portion ng mental health ay positive din. Especially yung how to help yourself, how to cope with adjustment o kaya dito sa pandemic outbreak. So mental health, yun yung mental health. And may definition back later. <laughs> <laughs> Sige, the virtual stage is all yours now, Rian. Take it away. Thank you for that. Okay, I'll be sharing my screen. Ayan, hopefully, makita niyo na siya. Ayan, so I'll be in full screen mode. So feel free to, to butt in if ever meron kayong questions or concerns. Ayan, hi everyone. So ang ganda ng topic natin. This um this morning since it's about um mental health, diba? mental health literacy. So sabi nga dito, hashtag you matter. Kasi ang focus natin is about mental health ninyo mga nanonood. Ayan, so before we go through the definition of mental health, I would like to ask each and every one of you, kamusta na kayo guys? Ayan, so one, you feeling awful going dun sa pinakamataas na fantastic, which is yung five. Hopefully, marami sa inyo four or five really good and fantastic. So if you if you're going to ask me kung ano yung nafi-feel ko ngayon, I'm really good. Papunta na doon sa fantastic, siguro 4.5. <laughs> How about you guys? Ano yung score ninyo or ano yung rate ninyo? 1 2 3 4 or 5. So while waiting for your responses, yon, I would like to ask si Patricia and John. Kayo kumusta? Let's start with you, Patricia. Go ahead. Uh, I I would also say that I'm I feel that I'm really good. For the past um, couple of months, I've been, um, again, busy with work. Siguro nung start lang ng ECQ because everything was new to us. We were not um, used to this situation. It was unprecedented. So it, it's it's all about uncertainty. But now for the past three months, siguro uh, I was able to cope already with the so-called new normal. And I think also all of our viewers, I'm sure most of us, Medyo nasanay na rin. As we transition from ECQ to GCQ and some of us are going back to work, being able to go out already and yung safety precautions din na natutunan na rin natin which I think helped me also rate myself as hindi na ako ganun ka um, feeling of uh, fear and anxiety of uh, this pandemic. Although it's there but of course like what you've mentioned nga Rian na mental health it's it's all about positivity so as much as possible i i try to think of um positive thoughts happy thoughts yeah divide something that would also help us cope with stress how about you john how about me okay siguro i'm somewhere in between uh okay and really good uh really good siguro maybe because i'm i'm happy uh, that somehow i still have a job uh, of course, my family is healthy. Uh, uh, okay, because somehow, you know, I still feel bad, not for myself, but for those people who were really affected by the, the situation, the pandemic itself. Because, you know, a lot of people, millions of people worldwide, not just here in the Philippines, were affected na wala na trabaho. And, you know, uh, lucky me, siguro, I'm in a company who was able to cope up with, with the current situation and... Uh, of course, the current job, the current work uh, I have right now is keeping me busy also at the same time. So, yeah, uh, those are 
yeah, I think I'm somewhere in between okay and really good. Wow, so good at nandito tayo sa papunta sa my right side. So yeah. I'm actually I'm quite excited then kung kamusta kaya yung naging scores ng mga nanonood sa atin ngayon. So hopefully okay lang kayo. So later maiintindihan niyo kung ano ba talaga yung mental health. Ayan. So, ito na. Yung question ko, important siya. Kasi dito natin makikita ko may mga misconceptions ba kayo? Ayan. So, what comes to your mind when you hear mental health? Ayan. What comes okay. to your mind when you hear mental Ako, health? Ako, siguro, if you ask me about mental health, um, to be honest, it's it's a topic na bihirang pag-usapan. So, not everybody knows what mental health is. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I, I know a lot about mental health. So, uh major limited my 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 information about mental health uh and i'm quite lucky actually to be in this in this forum right now with you ryan uh rian and of course patricia mm-hmm. so i'm looking forward to hear more about uh, what this mental health is yes how about you patricia well for me my definition of uh mental health sigura it, it refers to a state of well-being where a person realizes how he or she copes with um with the stress that's happening in his or her life and yeah. iba naman yung mental health leading to mental condition na something that's um psychiatric na siguro correct me if i'm wrong uh riana so parang yon yun mental health for me is is how a person is able to to cope with the uh, stress her abilities, her her potential, and also how a person displays uh, resilience. Okay. And it's all about so that, like, coping. That's good. No, that's good. Because we can see that there is a mental health literacy background, no? Uh, compared to the other, there are some may misconceptions pa rin naman. And it's something na hindi naman uh, nakakahiya. Kasi kaya nga natin siya pinag-uusapan para somehow uh, may correct natin or may tama natin yung mga ilan sa mga misconceptions natin when it comes to mental health. So, some of you might be answering yung um, anxiety, yung unang pumasok sa mind na anxiety or um, depression. depression. Iba, pa yeah. nga, iba pa nga may toyo or baliw. Ganyan kagad yung um, lumalabas na sa mind nila. Oh, unang okay. na-activate sa mind nila. And it's something na connected dun kasi sa social Um, experiences natin kapag pinag-uusapan yung mental health because mental health is a tabu, di ba? Buti nga ngayon, nagsistart na siyang um, mapag-usapan ng parang hindi siya ganun ka-problema na, di ba? Nag-open na yung mga tao kahit pa paano. So, so, thank you so much for your responses. Now, let's define mental health. So, when we say mental health, when we try to use the definition of World Health Organization, it's the ability of the person to realize his or her potentials. So nagagamit mo yung skills, yung 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 gifts na meron ka. Um yung na mention kanina ni Patricia about um um stress management, that's part of the definition of World Health Organization, how you um cope with the normal stresses of life. Yan, how you bounce back or paano ka nagiging resilient to the extreme adversities um in life tulad ng pandemic outbreak, ng typhoon, ng earthquake. It's also about being productive at work. Ayan, pero syempre I would like to remind everyone na huwag yun naman i-pressure yung sarili ninyong maging sobrang productive at this point in time. Kasi yung na-experience nating pandemic outbreak, it's not a normal situation. It's really hard to be functional sa gantong klase ng setup. So pwede kayo mag-set ng realistic and doable na goals. Okay? So pro- pro- productive ka pa rin naman kapag meron kang nagagawa. No, kahit pa paano no, sa sarili. Huwag lang masyado maging harsh. Ayan. So medyo in-adjust natin yung definition ng productive or productivity sa, ano, sa mental health. And it's also about um, contribution to the community. Ayan, regardless kung small ba yan, um, product, ano pa rin yan, contribution pa rin yan sa community. Like for example, sharing yung mga um, contact numbers or yung um, directory sa mental health. Example yan ang contribution na sa community. Kasi marami sa atin ngayon are, are affected ng, um, ng mismong pandemic outbreak at nangangailangan sila talaga ng mga online psychosocial services. So if you share yung mga posts, na may directory ng mental health. That's an example of a small way to help the community. Ayan. So, that is the definition of mental health using the World Health Organization definition. And also, I would like to add now when we talk about mental health, it also includes our emotional or affective aspect, psychological aspect yung sa ating mind, and social well-being. So, when we say social well-being, it's how we deal with different people or yung interpersonal relationship na meron tayo. When you are um, healthy, Um, mentally healthy, 
mapapansin natin na okay lahat ng aspect na yan. Emotional, meaning you regulate your emotions. Kahit na sa difficult situation ka, kaya mo ma-manage yun. Psychological, you can still think, you can still decide. Rational ka pa din, no? When it comes to decision making. Social well-being, you still have um, social and emotional support sa mga um, trusted friends and loved ones mo. Nakakapag-usap ka pa din. Hindi mo ina-isolate yung sarili mo sa kanila. So tulad na mention na, yes, may physical distancing tayo, but we are not socially disconnected. Meron pa rin tayong connection. And mental health is also very physical. So, misconception then kapag sinabing, ah, meron kang mental health disorder, it's all in the mind. That's wrong. Kasi pag sinabi natin mental health, it's also uh, physical. Kaya kunwari, ibang tao, meron silang, malimbawa, anxiety. So, hindi siya all in the mind. It's not all in the mind. Kasi nagmamanifest din siya sa physical symptoms. Like, may ibang tao, pag may anxiety, difficulty in breathing. Pero iba nagpa-palpitate. So, nag appear din sa physical. That's why you need to take care of your mental health. Kasama din ng physical health natin. Kaya nga sinasabi na there is no health without mental health. So, it affects how we think, feel, and act. So, lahat ng tatlong to, nag-ano siya, i-interact siya. I'm not sure kung kayo nakaka-relate kayo dun sa na-mention ko. Talaga ba nag a kayo doon? Um, Rian, meron nga akong hashtag dyan eh, dun sa sinasabi mo kanina on the first part of what you were saying. Hashtag, it's okay not to be okay. Diba? Uh, it's something that, actually, medyo popular. Meron nga tayong k-drama na title na It's okay not okay, to be not okay. To be a-, a song, okay. diba? It's <laughs> okay not to be okay. So for me, what I realized is that you should be able to accept first the feeling of anxiety before you will be actually able to cope with it. Yes. Alam mo, yun yung, ang ganun na sabi mo dun, Patricia, kasi di ba, kanina na-mention natin na parang huge portion of mental health is positive. Pero hindi natin actually ma- may experience yung wide range of positive emotions and experiences if we don't actually allow ourselves to experience yung negative thoughts and negative emotions. Kasi toxic positivity talaga yun kapag dinideny natin yung kahit na anong idea about negative. The mere fact na may negative emotions and negative thoughts tayo, indication yun na meron tayong kailangan i-confront. So, dinademand so, dito na kailangan siyang ma-feel. Yes, tama. So, ang ganda nang sinabi mo. Ang ganda nang pasa mo. <laughs> It's okay not to be okay. Hashtag, okay. you matter. Then, you, you matter. Yung know, kakalimutan yan, guys. If you share this ano, um, video. Ayan. So, now let's have the mental health spectrum. So, your mental health spectrum natin is actually your guide to know when do you need or when do you seek help from a mental health professional. Kasi yun yung usual question, when do I seek help? Ba? Um, okay pa ba ako? Yan yung usual questions nila. So sa mental health spectrum, it will actually guide you kung okay ka pa ba. Ayan. So pero ito, syempre, snapshot lang to na na-experience ninyo. It's not actually diagnosis, ha? Yung mga si-share ko, hindi siya diagnosis. It's actually characteristics lang na kung ano yung okay, ano yung nasa coping, ano yung struggling, and ano yung unwell. So let's start with yung healthy spectrum. So let's see, nasa healthy kayo. So when you say healthy, part of this spectrum, usually ito yung mga tao na they still experience yung mga normal mood fluctuations. Meaning, pag sabi natin mood fluctuations, may times na um, you feel sad or you feel uh, irritated, pero hindi siya nagtatagal. So normal mood fluctuations yon. Kung baga dependent naman siya dun sa situation. So talaga naman, minsan may mga nakikita ka sa Facebook or social media nakakagalit, hindi magagalit ka, pero after mawawala na din naman siya, hindi siya nagsistay. It doesn't really affect your other aspect of um, of life. Kung baga, nainis ka, nalungkot ka, pero eventually magiging okay din. Yan, nakakapag-work ka pa naman, nakakapag-usap ka naman, etc. And then, when it comes to sleeping pattern, normal naman siya. Although there is... Um, may nag appear na few sleep difficulties. Especially kapag nasa adjustment period. Siguro kayo nung um, start ng quarantine natin, yung first uh, few weeks, ayan, nahirapan iba sa inyo matulog, but it doesn't mean na meron agad na abnormality doon ha. Part talaga ng coping yon na may few sleep difficulties yan. So kahit healthy ka, possi- possible naman na meron kang few sleep difficulties. Pero when you try to rate your overall sleeping, Uh, kung good pa naman yung quality niya, feeling mo relax ka naman, refresh ka pagkagising mo, that's still good. Okay, nasa normal pa naman siya. And then when it comes to um, motivation, you still have enough energy to do your work, uh, makipag-socialize, um, gawin yung self-care activities mo. So nasa healthy spectrum ka pa rin. And then you are still socially active, meaning kahit nasa virtual space, 
um, you can still um, talk to your friends and loved ones. Ayan, you can still rep meron ka pa rin enough time to reply doon sa mga email ng boss mo or ng mga colleagues mo. Ayan, hindi ka pa naman nag-make ng excuse. Ayan, and then um, good pa naman yung concentration or yung attention mo. Hindi ka pa naman ganun ka-forgetful. Manonotice natin sa ibang part ng spectrum. So, ayan. So, that is yung healthy spectrum. Yun yung usual characteristic niya. Now, let's proceed with coping. So, sa coping, there is this transition. No? May, may transition siya from normal mood fluctuation, transition siya sa nervousness, um, irritability, uh, feelings of sadness. So kung kanina na-mention ko, dumadaan lang yung fluctuation na yon Pero dito, medyo nag-sustain na siya ng kaunti. Ayan, nag-increase na siya. So may nervousness, may irritability, may sadness, and sometimes yung sadness na yan, minsan overwhelming yung feeling. Ayan, medyo may konting stress ka na na-experience. And then there's also trouble in sleeping. Ayan, may trouble ka na in sleeping. Meron ng increase in um, body pains. Ayan, may pwedeng mag-appear na body pains na yan. Yan. And then, um, when it comes to um, social activity, medyo nag-decrease ka na. So, yung motivation mo, nag-decrease din siya. Ayan. So, kung nanonotice mo na parang medyo hindi ka na nakikipag-usap tulad before, pero manageable pa naman, maaaring nasa coping um, strategy ka naman or coping uh, part of the spectrum. When it comes to attention or concentration, to medyo naapektuhan na din ng konti yung concentration mo, pero still manageable pa din siya kasi nasa coping ka pa rin naman. Um, when it comes to um, handling your um, yung stress level, dito ma-observe mo na may times na overwhelm ka ng distress. Ayan. So, hindi ka tulad dati na parang um, effortless ka kung magmamanage ka ng distress mo. Kayang-kaya mo siya. So, dito medyo may konting difficult ka when it comes to managing your um, stress. May times nag appear din yung pagmamanage mo ng stress mo ng into maladaptive way tulad ng procrastination. So, kaya mo naman siyang gawin ngayon pero parang I don't feel like doing this ano, this work. no. So, tomorrow na lang. So, may procrastination. So, nagko-coping ka na. Ayan. So, ganyan yung usual characteristics Sorry, ng coping. Yeah. Ayan. Um, question, about, so, question lang about you mentioned about procrastinating. You know? So, is that a, a stage already? Like me, for example, uh, I don't want to work on this particular task for today because I know I can do this tomorrow. Am mm -hmm. I already in the stage of coping na ba? Possib possible. So ito, ano lang naman, guideline siya. Possible na nasa coping ka, kasama pa halimbawa ng mga ibang characteristic na na-mention ko. If mas madami ka talagang um, characteristics dito sa coping, more likely nasa coping uh, spectrum ka. So, may mga times na ganun kasi, lack of energy or drive to, to finish or to complete the task. Kaya usually, nagpa-procrastinate. But kung nagagawa mo pa naman, for example, gagawin mo siya tomorrow, natatapos mo pa naman siya, okay pa naman yun. yun. So, It's not naman, Rian, an implication na parang you're not... Um, mentally okay the ba because some of some of the some of us kasi like it's it's part of our ano na nakasanayan na natin yung pagpo-procrastinate so it doesn't mean na pag palagi ka nang pa-procrastinate hindi naman ibig sabihin na meron ka ng mental um instability or should or you reach mental health concerns uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -oh. is it like alam mo ang ganda ng pasok doon sa sinabi mo no since ito yung sinasabi natin na you have to know yourself then So, kunwari, sabi nga ni Patricia, ikaw yung type of person na lagi nagpo-procrastinate. So, ngayong pandemic outbreak, nagpo-procrastinate ka pa rin. Wala siyang significant change. Mm -hmm. So, hindi ibig sabihin nun na um, nasa, ano ka, nasa, na meron kang mental health concern o kaya naman eh, mag-over pathologize ka na, hala, baka meron akong problema. So, kung ganun naman ikaw din before, wala naman masyadong change sa'yo, So baka, pero nag-increase lang halimbawa yung procrastination mo, maaring nasa coping ka or nagsa-struggle ka ng um, kahit papano dahil nga dito sa setup natin sa um, pandemic outbreak. So ang ganda na ng question mo na yun. So hopefully na, 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 na liwanagan kayo doon ha. You have to observe kung may significant change doon sa ginagawa mo, sa nararamdaman mo, sa inisip mo. So that's good. So yan. And then sa struggling spectrum, So, nag-increase din siya. So, kanina yung nervousness, irritability, and um, sadness, nag-transition siya into anxiety symptoms. Ayan. And then, may anger na. Yung sadness kanina sa coping, naging pervasive sadness. So, when you say pervasive sadness, it can actually affect yung other aspect of your life. So, hindi na siya simpleng sadness lang na parang maya-maya mawawala. Ito, maaaring maapektuhan na yung work mo, 
maapektuhan yung social interaction mo. Um, um, pwede rin siya naglalas na din yung duration niya as compared to dun sa cooking na hindi ganun sobrang naglalas. No? Ayan. And then when it comes to sleep, no, disturbed na yung sleep mo. Kanina sabi ko, um, few sleep difficulties. So as of this moment, dito sa sleep na to, disturbed na yung sleep mo. Hindi na ganun ka okay yung quality ng sleep. Feeling mo restless ka. And then yung na-mention ko kanina ng body pains na nag-a-appear sa coping, dito magiging fatigue. Ayan yung tipong, wala ka naman masyadong ginagawa ng sobra-sobra, pero feeling mo pagod na pagod ka. You're dragging your feet, no? Going to your desk and then going uh, to do your work. Ayan, pwedeng ganon. And then there is a decrease in performance at work. So, ma-observe mo kung nag-work ka, nagkakaroon ka ng errors, nagkakalapses ka, nagkakaroon ka ng poor concentration na. And there are moments na oblivious ka sa time. Or day. Ano ba ngayon? Wednesday? Friday? Saturday? So, yung mga times na... Hindi mo na napapansin kung anong Hindi araw mo. And it's something na pwede din natin masabing normal na reaction mo sa pandemic outbreak kasi nagsastruggle ka. Kasi yun nga, lagi kang nasa bahay. Hindi ka masyadong lumalabas ng kwarto. Kaya may possibility na kaya ka nahihirapan din talaga. And then when it comes to social interaction, ayan... Um, tendency is you try to avoid social interaction kasi parang wala kang enough energy to to maintain na din yung um, socialization. Ayan. So, wini-withdraw mo na yung sarili mo um, sa friends mo, sa sa family mo, most of the time sa sarili mo din. Kasi meron kang dinadaing. Ayan. And then, um, meron kang na-experience na distress. Medyo nahirapat ka na din talaga i-manage yung difficult situation. Ayan. Overwhelming na talaga yung feel mo. And then, nandito na yung feeling na parang kailangan mo ng help. No? Para meron kang gusto sabihin, like sa friend or sa, pwede sa professional. Ayan. So, um, dito ma-observe natin na nag-increase na siya. And then, sa ill or sa unwell spectrum yung pinakalas natin. So, dito excessive na yung nafe-feel mo na anxiety symptoms. Ayan. So, dito pwede masabi natin na baka may nag-appear na na mental health concern. Ayan. And then, yung... Kaninang na-mention ko may anger kang nafe-feel halimbawa sa struggling dito, angry outburst na siya. Tendency na pwedeng ma-express mo siya na maging aggressive ka toward another person, nabubulyawan mo or nasisigawan mo. O kaya ikaw may feeling ka na parang hindi mo makontrol yung anger mo, naging impatient ka na. So baka nandun ka sa uh, unwell spectrum. Ayan, yung feeling mo kanina pervasive sadness, hindi na siya basta pervasive sadness, depressed mood na siya. So parang most of the time you feel down. And then, kung naglalas na to, take note, kung naglalas na itong nafe-feel mo na to, yung symptoms kanina na na-mention ko na parang may anxiety ka or parang may depressed mood ka, naglalas siya ng two weeks or more than two weeks, nako, I would like to suggest na talaga magpa-check ka na sa professional. Kasi, ayan, maaring mental health concern yan. But we're not really sure kung anong disorder yon, Kasi maaring comorbid yan sa iba pang disorder. Kaya better to Uh, have yourself check. Ayan. So, Rian, And just then, to emphasize lang, no, yung mm-hmm. sa timeline na binigay mo na two weeks na feeling of unwell. So, para, syempre, for the information of all our viewers, kung yun ba yung mm-hmm. parang standard na isiset na natin for you to seek for help, for you to um, at least or call yung sa ating mga hotlines na available, di ba? Yung, yung two weeks na ba yun, is it like um, an enough time for you to assess yourself if you're okay or you're yes. still on track? Mm-hmm. So yun yung kasi yung usual na um, duration na sinacheck din natin kung mm-hmm. may nag-appear na mental health concern. Parang medyo um, general siya or standard siya no, para malaman mo kung may mental health concern ka or wala. So, kung nakita mong two weeks or more than two weeks yan, better na ipacheck mo siya kasi baka nga mental health concern na to na nag appear Kaya nahihirapan ka na talaga sa, sa, sa nangyayari sa'yo. Ayan. Lalo na kung kunwari na, na-apekto ka na yung occupational functioning mo, personal functioning mo, yung social functioning mo. Ayan. Kaya yan yung kailangan natin iti-take note din. And then when it comes to sleep, no, babalik tayo doon. Um, restless ka na, you sleep too little or you sleep too much. Ayan. Pwedeng example yon na you're not really okay. You sleeping too much. Iba kasi yung isip na too much, baka self-care to. Hindi, yung iba kasi yung too much na sleep, tapos pagkagising nila, feeling nila parang hindi pa rin sila refresh or hindi pa rin sila energized. May, ano doon, meron doon concern. No? Mukhang meron kang problema doon. Yes. O, kaya ito take note mo yung sa sleeping pattern. And dito ma-observe din natin since meron tayong disruption na ng sleep. Ma-observe mo na din yan sa physical mo. Pwede may significant weight gain, significant weight loss. Yan. Pag na-observe mo may ganon, 
Ayan, baka meron ka talagang ano, unwell ka din talaga. And then yung exhaustion, kung kanina sabi ko um, may, meron kang fatigue na na-experience sa struggling, dito hindi lang siya simpleng fatigue. It's like you're burned out. Parang yung feeling ng parang na-opos ka or exhausted ka talaga sa work. Ayan, so it's really difficult for you to perform your duties. Kaya pag sa work, more likely mataas yung absences mo, mas mataas na yung lapses mo. Ayan, baka makareceive ka na ng NT or yung notice to explain kasi nga hindi ka na nakakapag-perform ng tama. Mm-mm, di ba? So, okay. kaya yon. So, mga nakikinig naman na, ano, na mga um, human resources, they are very familiar naman na yung gantong klase ng manifestations ng um, employees nila, pwede manifestations na hindi talaga okay. Kaya, better din talaga nakakausap ninyo yung HR ninyo. Baka, i-refer kayo. No? Ayan. And then, when it comes to social interaction ito, yung kanina na mention ko sa struggling, you tend to parang um, isolate yourself from your friends and loved ones. Dito talaga, hindi na basta i-isolate or ina-avoid. Dito talaga, you don't want to involve yourself sa social interaction. So parang pinipili mo na lang talagang mag-isa dito. So ganun sa unwell na spectrum. So ayan, as you noticed, um, may nag appear na din na physical symptoms. Wala ka na din motivation halos na gawin yung mga bagay na dapat mong gawin. And then yung iba, kapag sobrang nag-increase na talaga yung gantong klase ng problem nila, nag pupush sila or nagpupusid sila sa maladaptive coping like drinking alcohol, yan, excessive drinking, smoking, overeating, yan, unwell. So, yan yung example ng mental health spectrum. Some of you uh, might be asking, ano yon yung karakteristik ko na sa coping spectrum? Tapos may ilan din ako nakuha dun sa struggling spectrum kasi nagmimix. So, notice lang ninyo kung alin yung mas madaming karakteristik na nag-appear, more likely nandun ka. So, yung question na when do you seek help? Kung nasa coping, or struggling ka, better na magpunta ka na kagad sa mental health professional because our approach to mental health should be preventive than curative. Hindi na po natin nahayaan na lumala ito bago tayo lumapit sa psychologist or psychiatrist para maiwasan nyo na din yung cost tsaka yung pag ano yung yung mas mahirap na pag-manage no ng ano ng nangyayari sa inyo. Basta kailangan as much as possible i-avoid na natin na maging malala yung situation po ninyo. Ayan. So, I Ian, hope na sagot natin yung question. <laughs> okay, Rian, I have a question. So, you mentioned sure. something about overeating, no? Uh, yung situation natin ngayon, you know, working from home, and you sometimes you go beyond work hours. Minsan, nag-o overtime ka pa until, you know, midnight. Uh, and there's a tendency for us to uh, stress eat. So, is stress eating a form of, you know, uh, mental health concern? So, and where does it fall sa coping, struggling, or unwell? Well, yung overeating, possibly nandito siya sa part ng struggling and unwell na spectrum. So, yung overeating or yung stress eating. Um, yan ay possibly, yan ay dala lang ng ano, ng yung pag-cope mo dun sa nangyayari sa'yo. So, kaya ka nags stress eating. So, may kinalaman talaga yung um, stress eating tsaka yung mental health natin. So, actually, connected din siya dun sa sleeping eh. So, more likely kapag hindi maayos yung sleeping mo, hindi rin nagiging okay yung appetite mo. So, dalawa yung pwede mangyari doon. Loss of appetite or mababawasan yung appetite mo. Kaya iba na babawasan ng ano, timbang. Yung iba naman, dahil nasistress sila tapos kulang pa sa tulog, uh, yung iba nag-yearn doon sa um, sugary na mga food. Yeah. Since masyado sila na-expose sa sugar, iba dadagdagan pa ng salty food. Kaya talagang hindi na nagiging okay yung, yung eating din nila. And then, syempre, may impact yun sa mental health din natin kasi meron kaming studies about mind-gut connection. Mm-hmm. So, before, ang paniniwala na yung serotonin or yung neurotransmitter na serotonin which is responsible for mood function, sa brain siya, nare-release lang. Yun yung idea before. Pero sa research ngayon, yung serotonin pala na neurotransmitter na produce din pala sa gut natin or sa stomach din natin. So, what we actually eat, no, na-influence doon yung production ng serotonin sa stomach natin. So, if we eat yung stress eating yan, mga unhealthy food yung kinakain natin, um, nagkakaroon ng um, yung bad microorganism growth, no? yung growth nung dumadami dun sa stomach natin, na mayroong impact dun sa mental health natin, kaya hindi tayo naging okay. So, kapag um, binabawasan natin yung carbs, kumakain tayo ng prebiotic and probiotic na food, or umiinom din ng probiotic food, Um, nag-i-increase doon, na flash out yung bad microorganism, mas nag-grow yung 
good microorganism, nakakatulong sa pag-produce ng serotonin para maging okay tayo, yung well-being natin, ma-boost siya. So, ganun yung nangyayari. So, meron talagang connection yung eating tsaka yung mismong mental health natin. That's why we need to watch out yung food na kinakain natin kasi yeah. meron siyang influence din doon. Aside from sa physical health natin, pati pala sa mental health, meron siyang connection. So, kaya good thing dito, kapag nagsistress it tayo, kaya meron din siyang impact sa mental health natin. Kasi most of the time, naubos din yung time natin doon sa maladaptive coping. Instead of exploring yung um, other alternatives na ma-reduce yung stress mo. Ang key naman kasi dito ay ma-reduce yung stress. Nagkataon lang, kumapit ka doon sa maladaptive coping na eating. So, kung gusto mo ma-reduce yung stress mo, there are actually uh, other alternatives no, na available na pwede mong itry tulad ng self-care activities na masya-share natin mamaya. So basta ang key dito, if you're stressed, i-reduce mo yung stress. Huwag ka kagad kumapit sa isa lang na um, coping mechanism at baka unhealthy pa yung kapitan mo, which is yung eating. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Feeling ko si Patricia, ayan, maganda yung ano niya dyan, background, kasi siya, ang ganda ng preparation niya. <laughs> well, because, um, of course, I have a binibini Filipinas pageant to be ano eh, um, preparing for it. Be, pero apart from that, uh, medyo health conscious kasi ako eh. So last year, I switched to um, plant-based diet ayan, to, to really keep me healthy. Pero in terms of uh, maladaptive coping, actually, Rian, it's something that I look forward to na malaman din ng viewers natin eh. Kasi some people eat because they just want to eat or since nasa bahay tayo, we learned how to, we, we learned additional skills, parang cooking. So, kapag ba, like, nag-overeat ako sa house, does it mean na meron na akong mental um, instability? Okay. Mm-hmm. So yun, actually yung question na yun, hindi naman siya totally connected, hindi naman siya automatically na may mental health concern ka kapag nag-overeat ka. So meron lang siyang impact dun sa mental health natin. Kaya sa mga nakikinig, please huwag po kayo mag-over-identify or ipathologize yung mga behavior ninyo. Okay? So pwede nag-overeat ka kasi yun nga, iba nakasanayin nila, naging habit na nila. Diba? Lalo pa yun nga, sabi mo, nagluluto. Tapos, yun na. Uh-huh. Tapos, iba, hindi kinakain. So, ikaw nanghihinaya ka. Sorry, yan, hindi na. naman ibig sabihin na pag nag-overeat ka ngayong pandemic, hindi naman ibig sabihin, no, na meron kang um, mental health concern. Oh, okay. Oo. Hindi naman automatically yeah, ganun. Uh-huh. Pero, meron siyang connection. Baka, hindi maging okay yung mental health mo. Eventually, kapag nag-overeat ka. Okay? Kasi, hindi siya, na mag- hindi siya okay sa physical health natin. At yung physical health natin, may influence mental health. So, yun. So, yun. I hope maninaw yung part na to, yung when do you seek help and to determine kung nasan kang part ng spectrum. Now, let's proceed with the implications of COVID-19. As you notice, yung ating COVID-19, hindi lang siya epidemiological crisis. Psychological crisis din siya. Kaya manonotice natin, there is an increase in um, yung psychosocial health. Mababasa niyo yun sa mga news articles na marami daw tao ngayon ang humihingi ng help kasi nga dahil sa psychological need. And kami din naman as mental health professionals, though wala kaming concrete data kung ilan na talaga yung mga tao may mental health concerns ngayon, pero nakikita namin at nararamdaman namin yung dami ng humihingi ng tulong ngayon. At madami nga sa mga clients na mamanage namin, nag over analyze or iniisip na meron kagad silang depression or anxiety. So hopefully, by discussing this part of my slide, maintindihan ninyo na hindi kayo sana mag-over-identify doon or ipapathologize na kagad ninyo yung nararamdaman ninyo. Okay? So, yan. Since nasa COVID-19 tayo, tinatawag ng isang psychologist din, alam ko si Dr. Carol yon na sabi niya, tayo ay nasa collective grief. So, lahat tayo doon nakakaranas ng grief ngayon or nagigrieve tayo because at some point, we lost something because of this pandemic. Pwedeng loss of a loved one, pwedeng break up, pwedeng um, yung loss of financial loss, pwedeng um, job loss. So madaming types of losses tayong na-encounter ngayon. Kaya tayo nag-grieve. And dahil dyan sa grieve na yan, nakakadagdag siya para magkaroon tayo ng um, um, parang um, mental health concern. Kung hindi man mental health concern, nasa stressed out tayo. So ito yung usual na mga um, implications ng COVID-19 sa individual. Pwedeng yan. Nasa stressed out, Um, yung, yung distressing part no, ng stress, ayan, stressed out, yung negative stress. Yung hindi na, na nila ma-manage yung kanilang um, distress. Hindi sila makapag-work ng maayos. Hindi sila ganun ka-productive. And then, yun ay na-exacerbate pa ng online fatigue. 
or nung online um, exposure natin. Kasi basically kapag adult ka, usually mga uh, four to five lang tayo dapat na expose sa technological device. Pero because of this um, remote um, setup, no? nag-i-exceed tayo sa 4 to 5 hours no? Minsan, halos buong araw gumagamit tayo ng cellphone tsaka ng laptop. Diba? So, kaya tayo nakaka-experience ng online fatigue which is usually marked by yung withdrawal mo doon sa social media platforms kasi nga, masyado kang nababurn out, napapagod dahil dyan sa online fatigue. At minsan, dumadagdag pa yung online fatigue na to. Dumadagdag siya na nakifeel mong napapagod ka because of online interaction. Dala pa halimbawa ng um, internet connection. Yan. Lumalabas sa studies, yung even yung 1.2 seconds na delay dun sa kausap mo, nagkakaroon siya ng issue dun sa um, relationship mo dun sa kausap mo. Usually, napaperceive mo yung kausap mo na hostile. Yan, kapag meron siyang delay. Pero sa Philippines, dapat isipin po nyo, hindi siya hostile. Maaring hindi lang talaga okay internet <laughs> connection. Okay? Huwag po tayong magpapadala dun. Ayan. Another thing um, na nagdadagdag sa online fatigue, yung adjustment problems natin. Ay, makikita niya dyan. Adjustment problems. Yung difficulty natin to determine kung ano ba yung personal life mo at yung work life mo. Di ba before po, na naintindihan nyo, di ba, na parang mas madali dati yung buhay natin or mas may structure tayo before compared ngayon. Kasi before, kapag nasa bahay ka, automatically alam mo kung ano yung role na susuotin mo. Pwedeng anak, pwedeng kapatid, di ba, pwedeng asawa, etc. Pag lumabas ka ng bahay, alam mo kagad automatically kung ano yung role na susuotin mo. Pwedeng yan, beauty queen, pwedeng host, uh, pwedeng um, HR, kung ano man yung work na meron ka. Di ba? So alam mo kagad yan kapag um, lumabas ka ng bahay. Pero ngayon, lahat ng roles natin or lahat ng hats natin, suot natin dito sa bahay kasi naka, nagsistay lang tayo sa isang place. Tapos sa computer tayo, minsan nalilito tayo, ano pang gagamitin ko ngayon? Ah, tinatawag ako, tapos nagtatrabaho ako ngayon. So nakukonfuse ka kung ano yung role na susuotin mo. Diba? Because of this pandemic outbreak. So kaya minsan nahirapan tayo uh, i-adjust yon So may, mamaya mag-share ako ng specific tips on how to reduce yung issues natin doon sa um, building boundaries ng work at saka ng personal life mo. Ayan, another thing na implication ng COVID-19 is yung unhelpful thoughts natin. So, most people ngayon, they are actually bombarded with negative thoughts. Ayan. Yung mga thoughts na hindi naman um, attached sa reality. no? Hindi naman accurate, hindi naman totoo. So, marami ngayon dito nag-iisip na or binabagabag sila na um, I'm a failure. Ayan, o kaya naman ay maluser, o kaya naman isipin na parang hindi na ako tatagal dito, baka magkakasakit na ako. Yung mga ganong klase ng thoughts. I'm not sure kung kayo din ba, meron kayong mga ganong thoughts ngayong pandemic? Kasi medyo marami-rami ako na namimit na may unhelpful thoughts sila. How about you guys? Hindi naman kayo um, natatamaan pa ng unhelpful thoughts. Okay pa naman kayo. Well, sometimes, of course, kasi imagine um, John and um, Rian, no? seven months na ata tayo in this um, situation. So it's really um, unavoidable to think about those negative thinking, negative thoughts, because we had um, so much changes eh, in terms of uh, working also, diba? Kahit yung mga teachers natin eh, in terms of educating our um, students, eh, they also had this drastic shift from uh, face-to-face learning to online learning. So, mm-hmm. hindi talaga natin may iwasan for me ha, to, to think about those, those negativity. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, as for me, no, siguro... Maybe I had the, those unhelpful thoughts uh, when when the pandemic started, you know, especially on the first to the second month, or maybe up to the third month. Because, of course, you think, you know, uh, if, will my company stay, or will I have to leave my job? You know, and then, uh, maybe connected to the online fatigue as well, because you. You, you see a lot of negative things online. Nagpapatong uh, patong na siya. Until eventually later on, you know, you're able to cope up because you know you you see something uh, a lot of good things happening, not just for yourself, but but also for for a lot of people. So maybe to answer your question, on the first three months, I was able to you know uh, have have those thoughts, but I was able to cope up. Okay, good. So yeah. Um... Common yun na meron tayong unhelpful thoughts and it's normal because of this setup. So, wag kaya, kagad tayo mag-isip na 
meron kagad tayong problem. So that's how we uh, cope with change. No? Part talaga siya ng process natin. Um, and tulad nga na mention kanina, it's okay, it's okay to welcome yung unhelpful thoughts na to kasi uh, malaki yung help din niya to actually exercise din yung resiliency natin, yung emotional competence natin, and how to to um, confront yung problems natin. Kasi the more we deny din yung unhelpful thoughts na to, hindi matatapos yung loop na yan. Doon lang siya mangyari. So kailangan lang din natin ng specific strategies to reduce yung unhelpful thoughts. And later, i-discuss ko ng konti yung ways to reduce yung unhelpful thoughts. And another implication of COVID-19 is yung increase ng fear and worry. When this will end? Ayan. Kailan mo magkakaroon ng vaccine? So yung mga fear and worry na yan, common na common din siya ngayong pandemic outbreak. Pero siguro ito yung dapat natin tandaan. Kailan ba sa- natin talaga masasabi na yung fear and worry natin ay um, something na parang pwede ng mental health concern? So ito lang yung tatandaan natin. Kasi when we say fear, it's a basic human emotion. It's normal. It's present-oriented. So ma-observe natin na hindi na yan okay kapag yung fear mo or yung worry mo sobrang intense niya at nakafocus parati siya sa future. Future-oriented na siya. So maaring hindi na yun fear, maaring yan ay anxiety symptom na intense fear and worry. Yung tipong hindi pa nangyayari, wala naman yung object na nagkukos ng fear mo, pero sobrang takot na takot ka. And then meron pa nag-appear ng mga physical symptoms once na naiisip mo yon. So maaring yon ay um, symptoms, ng, symptom ng isang anxiety disorder. Pero again, malalaman lang natin yon once na pa-check tayo sa psychologist. So ayan yung mga implication ng COVID-19. Sobrang naapektuhan yung mga tao. Kasama na dito yung adjustment problem tulad na na-mention ko kanina sa so work-life um, integration or balance. Ayan. Siguro ito na, pag-usapan na natin yung ways to stay mentally healthy. Since kanina pa natin pinag-usapan din yung mga uh, medyo negative, no? So yeah, nandito tayo sa positive. Uh, ways uh, to stay mentally healthy. important part ng forum yes. natin eh. Yan. Yeah. So, so tayo Yeah. So guys, kailangan lang talaga namin ma-discuss yung konting part na yon kasi yung struggles ninyo, valid siya. Para lang ma-validate kayo na yung nararamdaman ninyo, normal siya. Okay? Part talaga siya ng process ng pag-adjust natin sa pandemic. Pero yun nga, meron tayong mga ways to stay mentally healthy kahit na nandito tayo sa crisis na to. So number one is to recognize the problem. It's easier said than done. ba diba? Recognize the problem. Pero most of the time, paano mo malalaman kung nararecognize mo ba talaga yung problem mo or hindi? Yung iba kasi ganito sila. Nararecognize sila na meron silang problem pero dinedenay nila. Hmm. May mga ganon na, um, oo, oh, oh, may problem ako. Pare, ito, yung usual ko na-encounter sa mga sessions. Uh, may problem daw siya. At um, yung problem daw na na yun, wala na din naman daw yun kasi nakamove na rin naman siya, nakamove on na din naman siya, na-work out naman din daw niya. Tapos mamaya mag-ask ka lang ng questions sa mo malalaman na parang hindi ko siya totally okay. Dinedenay lang niya yung feeling. Aware siya sa problem, but hindi niya kinoconfront yung mismong problem. So it's like, um, hindi... Minamadali yung healing process, minamadali yung acceptance, kahit hindi pa talaga totally na pa-process. Mm-hmm. Once you recognize the problem, you are also allowing yourself to feel um, to feel upset, uh, to feel yung negative emotions. So why din yung negative emotions na yun? Like yung galit, yung inis, yung sadness. Kasama yun sa pag-recognize ng problem. You allow yourself na ma-experience yun. Huwag kayo kagad papasok na sa feeling na, hindi okay lang yan. I understand. I understand kung bakit ginawa sa akin yan. I understand kung bakit ganito ako ngayon. Ang focus ninyo sa recognition ng problem is yourself. Hindi yung ibang tao, kundi yung sarili mo. Huwag ninyong i-justify yung mga bagay na nangyayari sa inyo ngayon na negative na uh, kaya ito nangyari sa akin kasi deserve ko ito kasi ginawa niyo kasi kung hari, sa relationship, may pagkukulang ako. Kaya nangyari sa akin to, deserve ko to. So, naintindihan ko siya. Huwag mong gagawin yon kasi you're not actually focusing on yourself. Di mo nararecognize yung problem mo. Instead, justify mo yung ginawa sa yon na hindi maganda. Okay? Hindi ka nakakatulong dun sa mismo process ng healing mo. Okay? So, focus on your own um, progress. Recognize the problem. There's something wrong. I'm sad. I'm angry. I'm mad, etc. So, recognize the problem. Okay? Uh, feeling ko baka may mga questions pa dyan later on. Ayan, recognize the problem. Don't deny it. And then, examine and challenge yung thoughts ninyo at saka yung emotions ninyo. For example, I've mentioned earlier yung mga maladaptive thinking like, um, I'm a failure, um, I'm a loser, o kaya naman yung simpleng mga bagay na um, 
na, na, ano ka lang, uh, meron kang na-experience na hindi maganda sa isang situation, and it's actually insignificant. Or for example, sa interaction na lang sa colleague. Ayan, kunwari nag-present ka uh, ng report na limbawa sa colleague mo, and then yung colleague mo, um, hindi masyadong nag-response. Sakto lang yung response niya. And then, ikaw, as someone na mayroong um, unhelpful thoughts, you tend to um, magnify yung insignificant na response sa'yo ng katrabaho mo. Inisip mo kagad na, hala, baka hindi maganda yung performance ko, kaya ganun lang yung response niya sa akin. Hala, I'm such a loser, kasi baka hindi maganda yung presentation ko. So, magnify Example yun ng unhelpful thoughts, no? Ayan. O kaya naman, halimbawa, hindi ba iwasan sa workplace, di ba? Bari yung mahal mo sa buhay, or asawa mo, or partner mo, na transfer ng trabaho kasi kailangan niya mag-transfer para mas safe daw, mag-stay in, ganyan. So, yung unhelpful thoughts to, halimbawa na na usual na encounter ng iba, ilan lipat siya ng work or mag-stay siya somewhere else. Baka makahanap na siya ng iba. Example yun ng unhelpful thoughts. You have to examine, you have to challenge your thoughts. What are the chances na maghahanap siya ng ibang uh, partner kung okay naman din talaga yung relationship ninyo? What are the chances na mangyari yon kung talagang nakafocus naman din siya sa work? Pandemic outbreak, mangyari ba talaga yon? So yan, doon mo i-challenge yung thoughts mo. Um, gaano ba siya katotoo? May mali ba talaga sa inyo? So yung mga ganun, maghahanap ka ng evidence sa reality kasi most of the time, nagiging harsh tayo sa sarili natin. Ayan, o kaya hindi nakareply sa'yo yung friend mo. Isipin mo kagad na bad friend ka na ba kagad? Hindi ba pwedeng busy lang siya? So yung mga ganun klase ng thoughts, nag appear siya ngayon kasi lack of social interaction or lack of um, face-to-face interaction. Mas mahirap yung means of communication natin. Kaya one way, aside from examine and challenge your thoughts, is to actually communicate what you really feel to your loved ones and your trusted friends. Doon lang natin siya naayos kapag kinoconfront din natin siya. Hindi yung hinahide mo lang sa sarili mo at gumagawa ka ng mga bagay-bagay sa mind mo na hindi na, wala naman talagang basis. Kaya nga siya tinawag na maladaptive thinking kasi hindi siya Um, naka-base sa kung ano talagang nangyayari, ikaw lang ang nag-iisip. Diba? So, communicate it to your loved ones and friends. Ayan. And then, challenge and examine your thoughts. Ayan. So, baka meron kayo nga na dyan, comment. Meron ba kayong ganyan? Ayan. <laughs> uh, is, is maladaptive, uh, I'm sorry, what's the term again that you use? Maladaptive thinking? Thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, pwede ba siyang tawagin also as overacting, overthinking, or being paranoid? Ayan, yung overthinking. Siguro mas maganda natin gamitin yung overthinking. Oh, it's a common yeah. term eh, na, oh, na ginagamit natin. Na ginagamit overthink. natin overthinking. Oh, example yan, maladaptive thinking. Pwede yung gamitin siyang term na overthinking, overanalyze ng mga situations na walang enough basis. So, yon So, reduce natin yan by examining and challenging. Ito din, bakit kailangan natin siyang i-examine and i-challenge? As I mentioned earlier, um, mental health is about the way we think, the way we feel, and the, it affects the way we think, the way we feel, and the way we behave. So, kung hindi mo challenge yung thoughts mo na maladaptive, it can actually influence the way you feel and the way you act. So, imagine na lang halimbawa yung sa partner mo na hindi mo kinocommunicate, meron ka palang problem. Yun yung thinking mo. Ano na feel mo sa sarili mo? Baka nababababa yung self-esteem mo kasi kinocompare mo na kagad sarili mo sa isang imagine imaginary na parang na hindi na mapapalit ka, na wala naman talaga, no? Isip mo na, yes, di ba? So, parang bumababa yung self-esteem mo, hindi ka nagiging okay, mamaya nagiging, nagsiselos ka ng wala sa lugar, so ganun yung nafe-feel mo sa sarili mo, feel bad. More likely, magka-translate yan into behavioral outcome or actions. Pwede hindi mo napapansin, nasusungitan mo pala natataasan mo ng boses, di ba? Tapos, hindi mo napapansin na apektuhan na yung social uh, well-being mo or yung mismong um, interpersonal relationship mo dun sa partner mo, di ba? So, kaya yung thinking na yan, meron siyang influence na nararamdaman mo tsaka sa actions mo. Kaya better to examine and challenge your thoughts kasi meron siyang influence sa ating nararamdaman at sa ating behavior. So, yun yung importance din nun talaga. Ang pinipi ko dito is like siguro yung importance via ng sinasabi mo na yung open communications, no? It's also good to really say what you feel and confirm kung yun ba talaga. Kasi baka mamaya, it's, it's your own interpretation, eh. That could also or can also affect your relationship with your partner, your friend, or your family, di ba? Yes. So, open communication tayo and yung understanding din dapat natin talaga. Nandiyan din siya. No? So, 
ayun, kapag may nag-open up ng concern niya or ng problem niya, make sure din talaga na ina-affirm natin siya, makikinig tayo at hindi natin in-invalidate yung experience niya. Kung ano, sinabi niya ng, ng partner mo na ito na isip ko, tapos sinabi mo na, ano ba yan yung panagsasabi mo na naman? Wala namang sense, wala namang kwenta. Instead na ganun nga maging reaction mo, talaga masisira talaga yung ano ninyo, no? yung relationship ninyo. So, okay, so, um, ano yung, paano mo naman naisip yon So, instead of saying na, walang sense yan, walang basis yan. So, paano mo naisip yon So, it's a challenge mo din. Tulungan mo siya na i-challenge yung naisip niya at nararamdaman niya. No? Na wala talaga yung pinaggagalingan na talagang, um, na, na hindi siya nagagaling doon sa totoong nangyayari. ba diba? So, wag mo din, ano han, um, batuhan ng parang inis or galit. ba diba? So, maganda na pag-usapan ninyo, open communication, sabi niya, may potensya. Mm-hmm. So, yon malaking help siya. Hindi lang yan sa personal life, pati sa workplace. So, minsan yung sa workplace natin uh, na uh, identify tayo or napaperceive tayo ng colleague natin na parang chill lang or hindi masyadong um, nagtatrabaho kasi kunwari late na mag-reply sa email or hindi ka sumasagot kagad ng calls. No? Uh, better to communicate to your colleague or to your uh, to your um, supervisor or manager na may mga times na gantong time, busy ka kasi nag-aasikaso ka halimbawa sa family mo, blah, blah, blah. So, iba-iba kasi tayo ng schedule ngayon sa ano eh sa bahay. So, better din na kinukommunicate mo yung ganong part mo na yon para hindi ka nila ma-perceive na negative. Kasi para sa'yo, automatic na dapat yung naintindihan ka nila. Para sa kanila pala, hindi pala ganon. So, better din na talaga i-communicate ngayon para maayos yung relationship na meron ka. Yeah. Rian, so uh, Question, yeah. Rian. Ano kaya yung possible reasons why there are some individuals who's having a hard time to open up? You know, yung, ano yung mga, one of the reasons maybe is the one that you mentioned, you know, maybe they're expecting already na sasagutin sila ng ganito na balang or what. Pero ano pa kaya yung ibang possible reasons? Bakit medyo, you know, there some people are having second thoughts of sharing whatever they're, whatever they're feeling. Mm-hmm. So possible din kasi, yun nga, yung, 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 yung difficulty in opening up na meron kang problem. Kasi dahil doon sa, kunwari ikaw, na-feel mo na mukha kang meron kang problema or baka may mental health concern ka. Yung social and cultural stigma attached doon sa mental health, kapag mag-open up ka na meron kang problem, baka i-judge ka kagalala, ah, may, may, may mental health concern na atato, ganyan. So, hindi ganun ka-safe. Kaya hindi rin siya ganun ka-open na i-share yung naramdaman niya. O kaya naman, possible din, this person is actually used to um, helping other people. Strong yung personality niya or strong yung perception sa kanya ng ibang tao. So dahil strong yung image niya sa iba, gusto niyang uh, i-align yung sarili niya doon sa perception ng mga tao na yon. Kaya siya nahiya siyang mag-open up. Baka kasi isipin na weak siya kapag nag-open up siya. Pwede din yon. Nasanay kasi siya siya yung nagbibigay ng help at uh, nasanay din siya na makita siya na strong siya. At ayaw na ipakita yung vulnerability niya na yon. Or pwede din yung past experiences niya na once nag-open up siya, na-invalidate siya hindi siya pinapakinggan. So, pwede din yan kaya ayaw niya mag-open up. Aside from the social and cultural stigma sa mental health. Another thing kung bakit ayaw din mag-open up or nahirapan mag-open up, um, yung idea na siya din mismo hindi niya na-accept na meron siyang problem. Yung recognition of problem, minsan mahirap yan kapag nasa sayo na yan. Madali lang natin siyang ibigay na advice ngayon pero sa sarili mahirap. So, ayaw niya i-accept na meron siyang problem. At the same time, ayaw din niya mag-ask ng help sa ibang tao kasi pwede din iniisip niya na, ay, baka may personal struggles din sila, so pabigat lang din ako kung mag-open up ako or masustorbo ko siya. But always remember na ikaw din as a person na merong friends and may family, try to put yourself doon sa shoes ng isang individual or ng loved one mo na merong problem. Ikaw ba gusto mo ba na ikikip niya yung problem niya sa sarili niya? At ikaw nandyan ka, wala kang idea sa meron, na meron pala siyang struggle. Di ba, ikaw as someone na nakaka-encounter na yung loved one mo, meron siyang problem. Di ba, gusto mong magpakita kagad ng compassion, ng empathy, ng love, ng attention. Di ba? So may ganun kang um, tendency na ipakita sa loved ones and friends mo. So ikaw as someone na meron din naman problema kasi umiikot din naman ng mundo. Di ba, ikaw din nagkakaproblema. Huwag may deprive yung sarili mo doon sa ganung klase ng health. Self-compassion is important. Kung kayo may pakita yung compassion sa ibang tao, show yung self-compassion by allowing yourself na uh, makareceive ng help from your loved ones and friends. Okay? So parang ganun siya. No? Ibabalik mo lang din siya doon. Ayan. So it's important no? 
na ipakita mo yung vulnerability mo na yun. And ito pala yung ironic dun sa part na yun. When you actually show your vulnerability to trusted friends and loved ones, nag increase yung social connection and emotional connection. nag increase yung bond natin. Sabi nga ni Brene Brown, vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. Ayan. Kaya maganda siyang i-ano, i-express din. Next is to the attribute the cause of the problem. So most of the time, kapag may unhelpful thoughts tayo, we tend to internalize the problem na it's all my fault. So tandaan natin na one way to 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 reduce the problem is to reattribute the cause of the problem. Recognize the problem and uh, recognize na hindi lang din ikaw yung may problem doon. So hindi dapat siya ini-internalize. Pwede din na externalize mo siya. Hindi lang ikaw yung nag, yung involved doon. There are other people na nag-contribute dun sa problem. So wag mo siyang internalize ikaw yung may kasalanan lang. Another thing is that to think of this problem as um incidental. Uh, and it's not uh, that it's not permanent or temporary lang siya. Yung ibang tao kasi na may fixed mindset, they tend to think of the problem na ini-internalize nila, ginoglobalize nila, meaning um, ino-overgeneralize nila sa other aspect ng buhay nila. For example, ito lang yung nangyari, bad na nangyari. Inisip ka nila, I'm a bad person agad. Hindi ba pwedeng sa work mo lang to, hindi pwedeng na, na hindi mo pwedeng i-generalize sa um, personal life mo, di ba? Kasi separate siya. So, better na i-reattribute natin yung cause ng problem na i-externalize mo siya, um, isipin mo na temporary lang ito at incidental lang din siya. That's also one way to challenge yourself. Ayan. And yan, have self-compassion as I've mentioned. Uh, try, try natin to to talk to our child self. Ganun dapat. Para mas may patient tayo, mas kind tayo, mas sarili natin. No? Kasi usually pag pinapakinggan natin yung dialogue natin, internal dialogue, masyadong harsh, tapusin mo na yan. Dapat gawin mo to lahat, mga ganun. Harsh. So try to talk to yourself na, kunwari, child self mo yan. Para mas kind ka, mas may patient ka, at mas may compassion. Okay? And, yan, focus on things that you can control. As I mentioned earlier, implication ng COVID is yung uncertainty. Di ba? Na nagkakos ng fear and anxiety. At nagkakaroon tayo ng fear and anxiety. Too much fear and anxiety. Kasi we tend to focus more on the future. Na hindi pa naman nangyayari outside ng control mo. No? So to to reduce your feelings of fear and anxiety, focus on the things that you can control. Doon lang sa world mo. Follow the precautionary measures to stop the spread of the virus. Diba? May sense of control ka doon. May purpose ka doon. Diba? May direction siya. Also, yung response mo, yung behavior mo, yung thoughts mo, doon ka lang mag-focus. Yun lang yung kaya mong gawin. So instead of focusing on the future na hindi pa nangyari, focus doon sa area mo lang, sa mundo mo lang. Increase your social and emotional support. Spend time with your loved ones and friends. Appreciate them, di ba? Mag-chat ka lang, mag-call ka lang, na-appreciate mo sila. Mag-boost yung well-being mo, mag-boost din yung well-being nila because they feel like they are appreciated. Yung mga ganung bagay, focus on the here and now. Okay? So yan. And then, do self-care activities. So when you say self-care activities ito, we have ano um, misconception on self-care activities. No? Usually, napaportray ito sa media na parang luxurious na kailangan magta-travel ka, kailangan gagastos ka talaga to achieve yung ganong klase ng pag-boost ng well-being. When you say self-care, self-care, it's something that you actually enjoy. It's not necessarily na luxurious siya or expensive. It's simple as, it can be simple as ano lang, um, pag-ahalaman. Ayan, not necessarily na mahal na halaman. Oo, oh, oh, maraming <laughs> tayong yung... plantitas and plantitas <laughs> ngayon. Yeah. Diba? Yeah. Na, na we noticed. And mm. I think si Araneta, madami. Araneta City is like um, very um, abundant in those uh, kinds of ano, yung mga plants yes. na pwede mong ilagay sa yes. house. Beautification ng, ng ating homes, mm-hmm. diba? Okay. So, hindi na siya actually nakakatulong sa'yo na mag-boost yung well-being mo. Yung makita mo kasi na green, di ba, sa bahay, nakakatulong uh, siya na ma-relax ka. May effect eh. Yes. Yung, yung effect niya, yung influence din niya sa, sa mismong bahay ninyo. So, gawin niyo na yung mga strategies ninyo. Makakuha kayo ng mga halaman sa kapitbahay ninyo. Kasi ka na. Ang ganda naman yung halaman mo. <laughs> yung mga para-paraan natin, di ba? <laughs> Ginagawa daw yan ng iba. Huwag kayong magnanakaw ng halaman. Oh, dapat may paalam. Hindi. <laughs> Oo, oh, may paalam dapat tayo. So, hindihan natin something that you actually enjoy. And hindi siya kailangan mahal, di ba? So, self-care activities may iba nga. Self-care activity nila, TikTok. Yung sumasayaw sila, kumakanta sila. Pero kahit hindi lang TikTok, yung mismong mga app na 
nag-e-enjoy kang gawin. Like, for example, bijoke, di ba? So, kung ayaw mo naman masturbo yung kapitbahay mo, magbijoke ka sa cellphone mo. Di ba? Yung singing can actually help you improve your well-being. Dancing. Yung zumba-zumba, di ba, sa YouTube. Madami pa. So, ito yung mga example natin. Basta things that you actually enjoy. So, pwede yan. Um, gardening or yung parang pag, yung plantito-plantita na ginagawa. Uh, Relaxation. <laughs> Meditation, yan. Social media detoxification or yung pag-reduce ng social media use. Journaling can also help you kasi na-organize yung thoughts mo. Na-monitor mo din yung nafe-feel mo. So, malaking right. tulog yung journaling. Sleeping, yan. Siyempre, yung moderate amount of sleep lang. Huwag too much sleep naman. Kasi kailangan mo din gamitin iba pang alternative ways ng self-care. Yan. Personal hygiene, pwede din yan. Yung maligo ka lang ng ano, ng warm bath, may help din siya sa pag ng well-being mo. Naging mabago, mabango ka na, naka-boost naka pa ng well-being niya. <laughs> Ayan, yung tea. Yes, coffee, hot chocolate. Example lang din yan ng self-care activity na na-enjoy mo. Music. Yan, listening to music. Singing, dancing, cooking. So, ang dami-dami. Cleaning the house is an example of self-care activities na may physical workout na kasama. No? So, there are a lot of self-care activities. Kayo, ano ba yung self-care activities ninyo, John and Patricia? Go ahead, Patricia. Well, ako, actually, most of the things that you were showing here sa slide, I, I, I've actually tried to do it. Yung meditation, me, I personally don't do yoga before, but now, siguro once in a while after I work out, it really helps me relax, especially in the morning before um, coming to work. Or, well, I usually exercise eh, in the morning because it gives me energy. Because you exercise plus you listen to the music. So parang it, it gives you like a good start of the day. And yung social media, um, ayan, yung power off natin. You know, there was a time na I really um, had a detoxification from social media. Nag-deactivate ako ng Instagram account. I only use Facebook because at one point, I, I, I felt that it was um, becoming toxic already. Eh. So it, it's um, not good in terms of like my mental stability kasi it, it, it affects me somehow eh. So, nagkaroon ako ng konting pause sa social media. And of course, ayan, yung um, sleeping, I still try to make sure that at least five hours a day nakakatulog ako. So, yun, yung mga usual activities na na-research ko na rin, self-help na rin for me to um, be able to cope to what's happening right now in the ano no in this pandemic how about you john as you can see in my background yeah and we we actually have a small indoor garden we created a small indoor garden wow. with a we we have two aquariums with small fishes in it uh, lang because of you know the, the the pandemic well aside from the plants and then the fishes or pets uh, well, uh working out of course is, is is always a part of my daily routine usually i do that after work uh, i make it a point by 8 30 p.m i start my workout already good thing i have a coach who sends me mga exercises that i can you know uh uh uh, uh work out na gagamitin, uh, uh, by that time with of course good music Tama si Patricia. Actually, you you are motivated. Iba kasi pagka when you work out with, with people around you versus when you work out on your own, it's sad, you know? Parang medyo iba yung feeling. Actually, music actually helps a lot to motivate you to go and uh, proceed with your workout. And uh, yeah. Uh, with with social media, unfortunately, I cannot detach myself to social media uh, because, as, well, aside from hosting, I have a day job that uh, that's really into, uh, well, basically more on sales and marketing, and I have to be on social media all the time. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Siguro ang hindi ko lang nagag... Um, ang question ko actually kanina, Rian, is can you multitask? Like, for example, work. While you're, you're working, can you insert any of these activities like for example i'm working and then uh let's say i don't know maybe go and check my plants or something like that or work well, out between actually yun yung good uh good way then para mas magbus yung well-being natin na at some point or parang in between ng morning tsaka ng afternoon na nag-work ka at least 15 to 20 minutes aside from yung one hour na break time mo no sa sa lunchtime, talagang maglalagay ka ng 15 to 20 minutes na 
space time, nagagawin mo yung self-care activities mo para ma-boost ka. Kasi yun nga, we have short attention span, tapos talaga nakaka-burnout talaga yung work natin ngayon. So it's better talaga na maglagay tayo ng ganong klase ng self-care activity in between ng work natin para maging okay talaga tayo at mabawasan yung fatigue na experience natin. Yun yung magandang way talaga. Sa mga nakikinig, yun yung okay na gawin din ninyo. Yan. Question, last question. Cooking. Can you include that as part of the self-care activities? <laughs> Cooking? Yeah. Yeah, so, iba pa nga, baking. Basta yung self-care activity, it's, some, it's something na you actually enjoy. Good siya. Part siya ng self-care mo. So, it depends from one person to another, no? Kung oh. which one would really, like, interest you. Yes. Something that you could explore. And, you know, it, this is the good time to really know more about yourself, eh. In this pandemic, na parang enjoy ko pala, or kaya ko pala gawin to, or enjoy ko pala magbasa. Oo. Yes, actually, ako, ako ulit nito lang, I actually um, learned how to play ukulele. Yun, <laughs> isa lang uh, play yun. Learn new skills, eh, no? Nag-ukulele ako ganun. So, ang, ang cool. Marami ka na-explore. John, you were saying something? Yeah, actually, it's good that you mentioned about exploring uh, oneself. Like, you know, uh, me, I, I, the only thing I know na lutuin is very basic. Since the start of the pandemic, usually I give myself time to prepare what I want to eat during lunchtime, especially. So uh, with that, I was able to know that I can still make gluten beyond what I know already. So yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to that. That's why I ask about you know uh -huh. cooking, that sort of, you know self care activity. A lot of people uh, maybe have uh, discovered that uh, they're good in baking, you know, or 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 cooking. They learned how to bake and cook. Exactly, diba? So yeah, or maybe you know you you. They didn't know they have this green thumb. So maybe they saw it on social media that plants are being sold already. They just tried it. And then later on, from one pot, biglang naging garden na yung boom bahay ninyo. Yeah. Okay. So yun. Nice, no? Na na-explore talaga. So yan. Guys, sa mga nakikinig ngayon, please, yun, try ninyo i-explore kung anong self-care activities ninyo. So madami tayong self-care activities na pwede ninyong gamitin to actually replace yung mga maladaptive coping mechanisms ninyo. So yung key natin kanina na overeating is to reduce yung stress. Kapag na-reduce mo yung stress, ma-reduce yung overeating. ba? Diba? So kung um, papalitan mo yung eating ng iba pang way tulad ng mga na-mention namin self-care activities, mas magiging healthy ka. Mm -hmm. Ayan. So now, yung, ito yung pinakalas na din, it's okay to talk about it, yung problem natin. It's not a sign of weakness. Actually, it's a sign of being courageous no, when you talk about your problem. And it's also okay to ask for professional help. There's nothing wrong naman. Hindi naman automatic kagad na kapag pumunta ka sa psychologist, meron ka kagad mental health concern. Minsan, yun din yung way natin to, to actually ask the psychologist ko ano yung better na coping mechanism natin para mas ma-manage natin yung stress na experience natin. So, normal naman talaga to talk about your problem kahit sa mental health professional. Katulad lang din kung paano tayo lumalapit sa doktor. ba diba? Kapag may sipon tayo, tumagal ng konti. ba diba? Ayaw natin kagad na maging pneumonia yan or ubo natin na maging pneumonia bago tayo sa doktor. ba diba? So, kapag ubo pa lang halimbawa or sipon pa lang ilang days, pumunta ka na sa doktor. So, ganun din sa uh, psychologist and psychiatrist. Kapag na-feel mo yan na nagsa-struggle ka at feeling mo medyo na-overwhelm ka, okay lang talaga mag-ask for professional help. So, that's it. Uh, so I would like, no? so, okay, again, I have a question going back to asking the professionals. Mm -hmm. There are those who, so yun nga, parang part of the presentation or part of uh, this, the, this, this discussion we've had is there are those who hindi nila matanggap pa sa sarili nila there, that they're you know, experiencing this. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're having second thoughts of reaching out to, for, for, for professional help. Uh, aside from I asking these people, meron pa bang ibang tao na pwede munang lapitan you know, just to maybe to confirm if they're feeling, if they're in that stage already, uh, meron pa bang iba? Aside from professional help? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have support groups. So you can actually explore yung mental health support groups we have. Uh, yung um, Mental Health Matters by Kylie Versosa, ADSP, uh, Sa Buhay, um, Hey Hi, alam ko meron din sila. So actually, madami tayong mga mental health support groups sa Facebook. So, you can actually try yung mga support groups na yun. But, yun nga, please make sure lang na bina-background check na din yung mga mental health support groups na to. Kasi there are 
instances na uh, may mga records yung iba na parang nakaka-trigger daw talaga sa loob ng groups nila. So parang check niyo na yung mas magandang ano mental health support. Makikita niyo din naman yung mga comments. Eh. So yun, support groups malaking help siya kasi when you vent or share your thoughts and feelings no, sa support group na yun, may mga magko-comment din na similar experience, uh, matutulungan ka nila sa nararamdaman mo, and then makifeel mo yung sense of belongingness na hindi ka pala nag-iisa sa struggle mo. And meron pa palang way para ma-alivate yung nafe-feel mong um, problem or mental health concern kung may mental health concern ka. So kung yun yung parang nahiya ka pala, nahiya ka mag-share sa friend mo or loved ones mo. Ayan. Actually, Rian, I would like to add to that mental health support group. Sometimes kasi we need a third person's perspective because sometimes we we are shy to share what we really feel to the people that we know and coming from or joining a support group as such syempre wala silang background about you but what they judge is the situation not the way na alam nila kung paano ka mag-isip so i yeah. think uh, one of the good ways then yon to you know be able to help you cope and syempre nandiyan yung hotline natin de ba na yes. pwede pong tawagan naman anytime for free yung National Center for Medical Health. I think 24/7 naman ang hotline nila. So we we could yes. really have a lot of um ways and access to help ourselves cope yes. with with the situation. Yon. So thank you doon sa mga ano sa, sa sinabi ninyo no. Lalo na doon sa part ng buti tinanong ni John kanina na open up tuloy yung um, support groups kasi usually hindi nga siya na-share nga laging sinasabi mental professional. So better din na may mga support groups tayo na kasama para tulad ng nasabi din ni Patricia, malaking help siya para mas maging objective yung view uh, nila doon sa problem mo kasi hindi kanila totally kilala. So ayun. So yeah, they would like to end this presentation with with this uh, beautiful um, quote by Roy Bennett sabi accept yourself love yourself and keep moving forward if you want to fly you have to give up what weighs you down hashtag you matter so yun guys um, thank you so much for listening so if you have questions so I think it's time na magkaroon tayo ng short discussion about your thoughts no? about mental health okay so, so again thank you so much uh Uh, to all of our to our two guests for today, uh, Patricia, thank you so much, and then Rian, maraming maraming salamat. Uh, for some reason, uh, hearing this discussion, parang gumaan yung loko. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so, to be honest, you know, uh, I'm with with the uh, discussions. I feel that there's so much emotions about the presentation. I don't know for some reason, and then after the discussion and me asking those questions to you, I felt kind of light, you know, medyo gumaan gaan yung pakiramdam kayo. I feel some of our viewers have the same feeling as well, especially yung kanina yung tinanong ko sa'yo, yung mga tao na nahihiya or maybe uh, 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 having second thoughts of uh, sharing their experiences to their friends or maybe to their family. Uh, speaking of questions, eto na. So we proceed now with the next part of our uh, forum, which is the question and answer. So, uh, Patricia, you can answer the question if you want to, huh? if, uh, but uh, the, the, most of the questions will be thrown, of course, to Rian. So, but the first question is coming from Justine Santos. Can problems in mental health aggravate other illnesses and why? Okay. Yes. So, um, yeah, to answer the question, um, yes, uh, definitely. Yung issues natin sa mental health can actually um, influence or aggravate yung other illnesses natin. Kasi as I've discussed um, earlier, yung mental health concerns natin can be manifested then through physical symptoms because they are connected, di ba? Yung mind-gut connection nga natin, kanina na-mention ko din. So if, in fact, hindi lang yung other illnesses, it can also impact yung working and personal relationship natin na na-mention ko. So, yon Kaya nga, importante din talaga na kapag meron tayong nafe-feel na mental health um, concern, no, lumapit tayo sa psychologist kasi mamaya, connected pala siya sa physical disease din. May mga ganun kasi instances na uh, physical disease naman nag aggravate sa mental health concern mo. So, connected talaga sila. Okay. Uh, next question is coming from Jemeline. Is I think you mentioned this kanina doon sa, sa presentation mo, no? Is social media detoxification, uh, detoxification effective to ease mental health disorder? Patricia, you can answer this also. Well, personally, as I've mentioned earlier, it actually helped me um, 
that I've delved away from social media because I focused on other things. Like I started to do um, painting actually this lockdown. Ayan, meron ta kasi tayong mga activities naman na not necessarily na you have to be online all the time since work from home na nga tayo. We're always focused on the computer and, and it, it, it's hard to filter the things that we see on the internet. So somehow inevitable talaga that it affects our mental health. So me, social media detoxification somehow also um, really for me uh, would help uh, mental stability. Siguro yung setting your ano lang, um, like specific time on how much you will spend in social media, something that um, our viewers could, 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 could also try. No? Actually, that's a follow-up question ano, coming from Jamaline. How long? Do you have to stay away from social media based on your uh, experience how long ka nag uh, yeah, medyo kumain ano nga ba yung parang advisable timeline natin na uh, uh, mag stay away from social media before it really um affects us hmm. well yung sa part niyan kung gaano katagal di- depende naman yun sa iyo if you feel like um okay ka na di ba ma feel mo din naman eh ako for example i i i also did social media detox for one month So after wow. one month, parang feeling ko, uy, cool, kaya ko na. So bumalik ka ako ulit. Nakakatawa kasi nasa social media din naman ako. So nireduce ko lang. So yung personal account ko na very active, yun yung tinanggal ko, tsaka Twitter ko. Kaya na-delete yung Twitter ko before. Ang followers, na-delete ko siya. Pero okay lang. May bagong Twitter ako. Pero yun nga, um, malaking help siya sa well-being ko din. One month yung akin. So for other people, naglalas pa nga ng three months eh. It depends on you kung gaano mo katagal na kaya yung det- detoxification. And kung na-feel mo na okay ka na, then pwede ka naman bumalik. Pero maganda nun kasi after mo mag-social media detox, mas nagkaroon ka na ng control doon sa paggamit ng social media. Ayan, mas nare-regulate mo na siya. Kasi nasanay ka na um, hindi mo kailangan mag sa social media. That there are actually other ways then or other... Um, positive coping mechani- mechanisms that you can actually uh, explore to help you uh, do more and be more. Doon ko kasi na-feel mo. Social media naman, it's not your only means to communicate to your um, yes. loved ones. Eh. So detoxifying or like um, delving away from social media doesn't mean that you're disconnected to the world. Diba? You can do like personal messaging na without um, using social media. It doesn't mean that if you don't use social media, hindi ka na makakapag-communicate with your friends. Diba? So... Yeah, all right. Thank you so much, Patricia and uh, Rian. Next question, and uh, this is coming from Ray Santos. How can media content like TV shows and uh, advertisement uh, affect one's mental health? Well, um, yeah, maganda yung question. Um, media kasi laki ng role niya when it comes to um, mental health. So yun nga, um, media can actually distort the way you see the world, others, and yourself. So as you can observe naman, there are unrealistic portrayals and standards uh, that has been shown in the media which can actually impact yung people's perception. And syempre yung perception mo na yun, for instance, may impact din siya sa mental health natin. Halimbawa, yung Um, body image. Ayan. So, some people tend to compare their standards of uh, beauty, yung body image nila to those of other people na nagkakaroon ng impact sa self-esteem and sa confidence nila. And yung iba, kapag hindi okay yung pag-compare nila, so bumaba yung self-esteem, so bumaba yung confidence, yung iba, nagkakaroon sila talaga ng mental health concern. Tapos pag na-neglect pa, yung iba, nag-ano sila, nag um, try sila ng mga unhealthy way of um, eating habits para lang mag-lose ng weight na eventually nagkakaroon ng harm doon sa mental health nila tsaka sa physical health nila kaya yung iba nagkakaroon ng eating disorders. So yung nag-start lang siya sa media tapos ganun yung influence doon sa individual kasi nga, yun nga, kapag unrealistic yung parating sineset or na over um, na over siya ng, ano, ng media natin, hindi nagiging okay siya sa Um, perception ng individual na nagko-consume noon. Ayan. So example lang 'yon. So ang laki nung ano niya ng impact niya. Another example din na role ng media content doon sa mismo mental health. So there are situations where in yung mismong TV series ganyan, um nagpapakita siya halimbawa ng niroromanticize niya or nagaglamorize niya halimbawa yung parang uh, halimbawa suicide, nagkakaroon pala ng impact din 'yon sa 
sa ano sa mismong perception ng mga teenagers sa suicide. So iba nagkakaroon ng copycat suicide. So ganun, kaya delikado talaga siya. Kailangan yung mismong mga tao na nag-work sa media, iniingatan nila yung mga content nila, yung paano nila okay. nire-reframe, paano nila pinopost, paano nila kinakreate yung stories. Kasi sila talaga may pinakamalaking ano din, contribution um, doon sa mismong mental health din ng mga taong nanonood. Ano? I think Rian parang um I I've read that in the news also eh parang yung um increased uh, alarming spike of calls amid covid is um about suicide no So how do we ano kaya what's your advice to the people on how you can actually assess kung papunta na ba sa sitwasyon na to yung isang person especially sa household how how can uh, the parents know if Um, okay pa ba yung kanilang kids or their children or even your friends before we reach to that point? Mm-hmm. So, ang ganda ng question doon about sa suicide, no, yung nagiging alarming yun sa ibang mga parents and kahit sino sa atin. So, ang mahirap lang dito about sa suicide is that we can't, we can't actually predict kung yung isang tao na to ay gagawin niya talaga yung act mm-hmm. or yung suicide, no? Pero it doesn't really matter kung gagawin niya or hindi. Ang pinaka-important dito, pag na-feel natin na merong problem yung isang tao, as much as possible, nag-reach out na tayo sa kanya para hindi na umabot dun sa point na yon Pero meron ako ibibigay na parang guideline to determine if a person is at risk. At risk siya doon sa possibility na uh, mangyari yung ganung bagay. Ito ay nakuha ko dun sa um, suicidology. Mm-hmm. Um, ito ay guideline lang ha it doesn't mean na ito yung talagang um, accurate or talagang very specific pero as much as possible yun, i-assess nyo din to para matulungan kayo dun sa risk sa risk ng um, loved ones ninyo or ng friends ninyo Ayan. so the more na maraming nag-appear dito the more na mas maging ano tayo mas maging concerned tayo dun sa individual ayan so meron dito na tawag ng mnemonics na is path warm is path warm Ayan. So, I, S, tapos yung path, warm. So, start tayo sa letter I. So, sa letter I, ito yung tinatawag na ideation or suicide ideation. So, yung friend mo ba, yung loved ones mo ba, um, palagay mo meron bang nag appear na meron siyang suicidal ideation, like um, meron siyang nasasabi na parang um, gagawin niya yun. Nagpaparamdam siya na parang meron siyang gagawin na ganun. May ideation. So, iba yung ano ha, iba yung parang attempt yung act ng suicide dun sa ideation. Ito is iniisip lang niya. Okay? May iba naman, may passive type ng suicidal ideation. It's like ayaw niya nang magising or iniisip niya na sana mahit siya ng, alam mo na, ng sasakyan, something like that. So, ayan. Suicide ideation, nag-appear ba? And then, substance abuse. If a person, no, meron siyang background na para meron siyang substance use or substance abuse, ayan, para excessive yung pag- Um, inom niya ng alcohol o kaya ng drugs, no? may possibility na at risk siya. Yan, may at risk ha, at risk. So, I for ideation, S for substance abuse, P for purposelessness. So, yung tao ba nakausap mo, yung friend loved ones ba, meron ba kayong nafe-feel na parang may lack of purpose ba sa kanya? Nakikita niya na ba yung reason na parang wala ng reason to live? Purposelessness yan. Another, letter A, anger. So, nagpapakita ba siya ng feelings of uncontrollable anger? Yan. Yeah, meron ba siyang feeling na gusto niyang mag-revenge? Gusto niyang saktan yung isang tao na nakit sa kanya? So, minsan natural naman talaga magpaparamdam tayo na parang may galit tayo sa isang tao. Pero kung gano'n na ba katagal to, naglalas yung anger na to. Kasabay pa ng iba pang manifestations na namimension ko, it's something na pwede mo i-consider or kausapin siya para magsik siya ng professional help. Ayan. Another, letter T trapped. Yung feeling na parang wala ka ng, uh, well, there's no other uh, way no, to, to solve my problem kasi trapped na ako. There's no way out. So usually kapag may ganyang feeling isang tao, no way out na siya. One way is to end the pain. Through, yan. Kaya namamatay sila through suicide. So kapag may feelings of trapped, yan, um, one way na din yan na parang mas maging careful tayo dun sa tao na yon. And then letter H, hopelessness. Ayan, negative sense of self, uh, feeling of um, parang wala nang magandang mangyari sa future, uh, hopeless na siya, wala nang positive change, yan, hopelessness. W naman, yung withdrawal or yung withdrawing. You, does this person um, 
um, shows yung withdrawal to other people, uh, from other people. Ayan, we withdraw niya ba yung sarili niya sa friends, family members? Example yan na withdrawal or withdrawing. Anxiety. May presence ba ng anxiety? Yung um, too much feelings of um, um, nervousness, agitation, uh, unable to sleep, um, yun, anxious siya all the time, inability to relax, so anxiety. And then R, recklessness, yung pagiging impulsive niya, risky behavior, yun yun, recklessness. So manonotice mo yun, bakit siya reckless? Ano kaya nangyari sa kanya? Yan. When it comes to ano, when it comes to actions niya, when it comes to thinking, yan. Impulsive when it comes to decision making, yan. Recklessness. Mood. Yung letter M. Mood change. So does this person experience dramatic mood shifts or states? Na-observe mo yung significant change ng mood niya? Ayan. So yun yung babalikan natin is path warm. So suicide ideation, substance abuse, purposelessness, anger, trap, hopelessness, withdrawing, anxiety, recklessness, and yung mood change. So yun, yun yung mga risk factors natin na pwede nyo i-check. Pag nakita niyan, um, kausapin ninyo, increase yung social and emotional support, encourage nyo din to seek professional help. Yan. Um, there are cases kasi or situations na it's really hard to predict or see if the person is really, you know, may, may, may mental concerns or problems. So sometimes they say uh, this person wears a mask, or a happy mask, but behind that mask is actually a sad person, you know. Uh, I think the, the maganda yung upisa ng forum mo because you started asking, kamusta ka na? I think that's yes. the best way to know if a person is, you know, experiencing something. Ask that person, kamusta ka na? Out of nowhere, di ba? Out of the blue, yes. ask a person, oh, kamusta ka na? You know, and then there will be cases or sometimes maybe that person will spill, you know, magkukwento na lang din siya, and then in a way or another, nakatulong ka sa person na yun. Actually, it's something that you can contribute, di ba? We were talking about um, contributing something in the um, society and helping people raise mental health awareness. It's not just about posting yung mga um, public campaigns, but it's, but, but it, it's, it's also asking um, the people that you have a sphere of influence of, di ba? Yung mga people around you, people you interact with every day, whether it's um, physically or whether it's via Zoom, via FaceTime, Messenger, and dami na rin kasi nating ways to um, talk to our loved ones and our friends. So, a simple question of asking how are you, di ba? It, it, it's something that, yun din yung medyo, yung, yung pick up ko rin talaga dito sa, sa forum natin. Kaya I'm really, really thankful that we had this and um, dami ko rin natutunan from, from Rian. And yun, maraming maraming salamat uh, Araneta City for for this uh, forum on mental health. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, Patricia for sharing. How about you? Uh, uh Rian. Okay. Final word. Final words. Um yun, um guys, remember yung hashtag you matter. Ayun. So you matter. You have to focus on your own progress. You have to take care of yourself. Um there's um it's okay to seek professional help. Lagi namin sinasabi na it's okay to not be okay, tama? Pero ito lang din yung idadagdag ko doon. It's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. Okay? Kaya huwag natin hayaan magtagal yan ng two weeks or more than two weeks, no? Na neglect mo na pala yung sarili mo, baka may mental health concern ka. It's not, it's not actually a sign of weakness if you ask for professional help or if you open up to your trusted friends and loved ones. Better pa nga yun kasi nagkakaroon ka ng connection then or um, emotional connection, strong bond dun sa mga tao sa paligid mo. And it's okay then uh, to choose yourself kung feeling mo yun yung way mo para maging okay ka. So yun, basta always remember na you matter. Na you are worthy. You matter. You are worthy. Once again, thank you so much to our millennial psychologist Ria and Portuguese, and of course, to Bini Bini Patricia Garcia for sharing their time with us. Maraming maraming salamat, guys. Now, before we end, I just would like to announce that tomorrow, Araneta City will be having its 10-10 deal, Shop to Relive. Numerous offers will be given in participating stores to help give 